Hello everyone. This video covers section 4.1, uh, numerical differentiation. So this is an introduction to them. Now, before we go into 4.1, let's recall something that we've done a few times. Remember the Taylor series. So remember this, f of x is equals to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a over one factorial plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared over two factorial and so forth. Remember that this is the Taylor expansion or Taylor series around so this is going to be very important around a now using the exact same formula we're going to now expand f of x plus h around or f of x zero plus h around x zero so x zero is going to take the place of the of the a so if we expand we will get the following f of x 0 plus h is going to be f of x 0 plus f prime evaluated at x 0 times x 0 plus h minus x 0 everything divided by 1 factorial plus f double prime evaluated at 0 times x 0 plus h minus x0 square divided by 2 factorial and so forth which give us f of x0 plus h times f prime of x0 plus h square times f double prime of x0 now if we decide to to stop here remember since this keeps going but we're gonna stop it here we're just gonna write a kc in here and then we divide it by 2 factorial which is which is 2 so now here if you solve for f prime of x0 which is this part right here then we will have um, f prime of x zero is going to be equals to f of x plus h minus f of x zero divided by h minus h times f double prime of k c divided by two, and this is what we're going to call the difference formula. So this is the actual uh, approximation and this will be the, the error bound. This part is the error. Okay, so this is one way in which you can get the, the formula. You can also get it using the Lagrange um, polynomials, which is we're gonna, what we will talk about in the next page. But for now, this is one way to get the formula. Notice that this should not be surprising. This is technically just the formula for the slope from algebra. This is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. However, using Taylor series, which I told you the first day of class, that will be very useful. You can also get an error bound for the derivative. So this should be the maximum error that you are getting when you approximate the derivatives. So these are called uh, difference formulas. Well, it's technically only one, but they're called different formulas, difference formulas, because if h is positive, then it's called a forward difference. And if h is negative, it's a, obviously a backward difference. Notice that from calculus, the actual derivative of this is the limit 
as h goes to zero of this. So that's the theoretical definition which you learn in calculus one. The issue is that for computational purposes, that's not going to be very useful because you cannot have a program going to to infinity. So that's why we had to come up with different methods. And we're going to start with this one, which is the most simplistic one, because this is like I just say a few minutes ago, is nothing more than the slope formula. All right, let's do a very simple example or illustration. Let's say that f of x equals to 1 over x. And you want to find f prime evaluated at 1.1. 1 .1. So that's what we want. Okay. So here, uh, you have to choose the value for h. Let's say that h, we choose it to be 0.1. Here the value for x0 will be 1.1. Um, so therefore uh, f prime of 1.1 will be equals to f of 1.1 plus 0.1 minus f of 1.1. Everything divided by h, which is 0.1. Now this is equals to a uh, point a three 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 it keeps going and this is point ninety 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 one and everything divided by point one and this is around point seventy five seventy five seventy six and that's an approximation for the derivative now notice that we know what the actual derivative is. F prime is actually equals to uh, minus one over x squared. And F prime of 1.1 .1 is actually equals to negative point eighty two sixty four. So you should check them. So after one step, you can say that this is not uh, close to that. And that's why we're going to use the error bound to tell you how close you should be, depending on the second derivative and also on the value for h. Okay, let's try another example. Let's say now that f of x is equals to 2 cosine to x minus x. Okay? And let's say that we want to approximate the, the derivative of f prime of minus 0.3. And we're going to use a forward uh, formula with h equals to 0.1. Remember that if h is positive, it is called forward difference. All right, so therefore here um, we need to find f prime of negative 0.3. That means that this is equals to x0. So this will be approximately equals to f of negative 0.3 plus 0.1 minus f of negative 0.3. Everything divided by 0.1. Make sure you use a radius when you use the calculator. So this is 2. 0.421 minus 1.9507 and everything divided by 0.1 and this gives you uh, 0.914 so again this one is a uh, forward because the value for h is positive so now let's do one where is a uh, backwards so let's say we want to approximate f prime at minus 0.1 and for this particular case now h is going to be let's say minus 0.1 and x0 in this case is also minus 0.1 so therefore this will be uh, f of minus 0.1 minus 0.1 minus f of minus 
and everything divided by negative 0.1 and this is 2.04 to 1 we already have this value you should check this this one you need to calculate it the second one divided by negative 0.1 and this is around 0.18 that's it as you can see this is very very simple now in this case it's very easy to find the actual derivative so the exact solution is this this is minus 4 sine 2 x minus 1 and f prime of minus 0.3 is equals to 1.2 phi a phi 6 Nine, eight, nine, four. Okay. So this is the exact solution. So let's see how this compare with the approximation with this. So let's create a table. So let's say this is x, f of x. Let's say this is x. Well, yeah, x, f of x. Then the derivative. Then the actual error. actual error and then the where the error bounces right so this is what we have if we use minus 0.3 this one was 1.9507 the derivative was 0.914 the actual derivative value was this so the actual error is the distance between those two, which is 0 0.3445.7. We use five decimal places. What about the error bound? Remember that the error bound uh, is equals to the absolute value of the second derivative evaluated as on KC times H divided by two. So this is the, the maximum it can be. Now, if the first derivative is this, then the second derivative will be uh, minus a cosine two x. So that's the second second derivative, and the maximum this can be is is a because the maximum this can be is one. So in absolute value, this has to be less than a times h which was 0.1 divided by 2 this equals to 0.4 so this is the maximum it could be so therefore the error bound is 0.4 and as you can see the actual error is less than the error bound so this is this is good now we also computed the derivative at minus um, 0.1 uh, the value of minus 0 0.1 is 2.0601. The value of the derivative was 0 0.18. So at this point, you should stop the video, find the actual error, which you can just use the formula with 1.a in here, and then check the, the error bound holes. And that's it. So as you can see, this is straight straightforward. So you still need to figure out this one and this one which should be to be obvious we can also use the following representation for the function which we had used before remember the l stands for the lagrange uh, polynomials so we can use this formula to manipulate it to get um, different formulas to approximate the derivatives uh, we're going to get to two formulas right now that they are called three-point formulas. And they are called three points because they will use three points. You will see. Now, from here, if f of x is equals to this, then if you take the derivative, this will be the sum from k equals to 0 to n. Or f of xk, remember that this is a, it's a constant. Okay. But L K is a, is a function that depends on X, so this will be times L K prime of X. Where 
the derivatives are given given in here. So let's say the x x1 is equals to x0 plus h and let's say that x2 is equals to x0 plus 2h which is technically x1 plus one more more h so if that's the that's the case then this implies that x0 uh, minus x1 will give you x0 minus x0 plus h which will give you minus h and also that means that x0 minus x2 will give you this minus 2h so therefore from here if we plug it into l0 prime you will have a uh, 2 x0 plus actually minus x1 which is x0 plus h then minus x0 plus 2h and everything divided by minus h times minus 2h which clearly simplifies to minus 3h over 2h square and this gives you minus 3 over 2h and as you can see this part is exactly this part right here so that's how you're going to get the, the following values and this obviously will be related to to this part now this one uses three points that's why it's called a three point formula so technically x0 x1 and x2 obviously if we use more points then the result should be more accurate now you look to the error bound this one has a h squared instead of h which means that this is definitely small so the error bound will be smaller even though it requires the third derivative instead of the second derivative but because of the h square this is supposed to be more accurate than the difference formula we use in the first examples all right so let's apply this uh this formula and compare with the previous one so let's find again f prime of po negative 0.3 and let's use h equals to 0.1 again so this should be equals to 1 over 2 times 0.1 times minus 3 times f of negative 0.3 which we know from the previous example plus 4 times f of minus 0.2 which we also know from the previous example and then f of minus 0.1 so this is equals to 1 over 0.2 and you should check these numbers this should be minus 5.8521 plus uh, 8.1684 and then minus 2.0601 and this is around 1.281 okay so now if we compare with the exact solution we should expect this approximation to be better than the difference formula we did in the first or the second example Recall that the exact solution was f prime of negative 0.3. If we only do three decimal places, was uh, 1.2 by 9. So therefore, from here, we have the, the absolute error is equals to just 1.281 minus 1.259 which is uh, 0 0.022 now remember that the error bound formula we have was equals to the 
third derivative. So it was the third derivative of some cas c times h square divided by six. So therefore the error bound error bound in absolute value has to be less than point one square. The third derivative uh, is going to be f triple prime. It's going to be uh, 16 sine 2x, which in absolute value is always less than or equals to 16. So it will be times 16 divided by 6. And this is equals to point, uh, 0.2, no, 0, 2, 6, 6 or say seven. Therefore, this this works. This is less than the error bound. So the biggest error bound you could have, or the biggest error you could have with this should be point zero two seven. This is less than that. So that means this computation is correct. And that's it. Now the second formula, or this one, is called the midpoint formula. And even though it's using two points, it looks like it has two points, it's actually also using three points. So I'm going to show you how to derive that formula using um, Taylor series again, what we did at the beginning. So for the midpoint, so we did this already at the beginning of the class today. So remember that f of x zero plus h was equals to f of x zero plus f prime of x zero times h f double prime times h square divided by two factorial which is just two and technically you can stop whenever you need to stop so we're going to stop here and you're going to put c zero here and although this is divided by 3 factorial, which in our case is 6. Now, if that's the case, well, that means that if we do the backwards, instead of the instead of using h positive, we can use it to be negative. This is what we will get. This will be now uh, minus f prime times h plus f double prime of x zero of h square. This is stays positive because if you square a negative number is still positive and then this will be negative triple prime in a def different case c this will be h q divided by uh, six. Remember the case c here whatever case c we are using has to be between x0 minus h and x0 plus h. Doesn't matter uh, which one we, what you call the KC, this has to be between these values, x0 plus h. All right, so now for lack of a better name, let's call this equation one and this equation two. So therefore, if we do equation one minus equation two, so this is uh, minus, we will get the following. We will have f of x zero plus h minus f of x zero minus h. Notice that this will cancel out. So you will end up with, uh, sorry, this will cancel out. So we'll end up with two f prime of x zero h, I mean x zero times h plus two the third derivative evaluated as another can c of h q divided by six. Why the two? Because it's this plus that, so that's how we get the, the two. 
Remember that the one we care, or the one you want to, is the f prime. So therefore, if we solve for f prime, f prime of x is zero, it will be one over two h times uh, f of x plus h minus f of x minus h. And then this would be the error bound square f triple point of some casi it is very very important not just for this class but for other classes you will take that you are able to manipulate these taylor functions or polynomials whatever you want to call them to be able to get the formula that you you want so most likely you'll have a question like this on the exam because there are many many formulas that can be derived either using Taylor or the Lagrange. And when it says derive a formula, this is the computation part, and it will be the error, error bound. Remember that this formula assumes that the computation part, which is this, is using an infinite number of digits, which is not the, the case. So in addition to the truncation error, every time or every step, Remember, we're also doing round of error. So if we take that into account for the round of error. In reality, f of h0 plus h is equals to the actual compute, computed value with the rounding error plus the actual error okay so we take this into consideration now you have two types of error the rounding which will come from here and the truncation error which comes from here so let's look into that a little more closely in the next page so we're going to focus specifically on the midpoint formula which means you can do this for any of the 10 formulas that are in this section. Remember that f prime of x is 0 was equal to 1 over 2 h. And then f of x 0 plus h minus f of x 0 minus h minus 1 6 h square f triple prime of some c. Therefore, if we find the absolute value of f prime of x zero, which is this formula, minus the actual computed values from the computer, or the actual calculations, okay, this is going to be equals to the error for the first one minus the error from the second one divided by 2h and then in addition to the error bound that we already have this is the third derivative in absolute value now if uh, e of h0 plus or minus h is bounded by some epsilon Okay, so it's bounded by that. Then this will be less than or equals to epsilon over h, because here you will have a epsilon divided by two is still just epsilon plus h square over six times the third derivative evaluated at can c. And let's say the the third derivative is always less than some value m. So the absolute value of the third derivative is bounded by m. So this will be the, the total error. Now notice something very, very, very interesting here. The if you make h small, this gets pretty, pretty small but this increases a lot. And if you make HB 
this decreases, then this increases. So this is what is called usually an, an algorithm that is unstable, and you have to pick each precisely if you want to have the best approximation. So it is too small. This is an issue. This will be good, but it will be an issue. And then this is, if h is too big, then this is fine, but this is bad. So you have to find the balance. And there is a question in the homework that will ask you to find what will be the optimal value of h to use in order to have the better or the best approximations. Now, before we go to the last part, remember that this error bound is particular to this method only. If you use a different formula, this will be slightly, slightly different. So this is only useful or only true for this formula. Now you can also rearrange the Taylor, Taylor series or the Lagrange polynomials to approximate second, second derivatives. Uh, you should look to the previous page when I derive the midpoint formula you should definitely give it a try and try to get this this formula. This formula, formula just comes from using Taylor, Taylor series again. Now this is the second derivative, not the first derivative, but the process is the same. So this is the, the method. And again, this is the error, error bound. Notice that for the second derivative, now you need four, four derivatives for the error bound. So let's say we wanna find f double prime of negative 0.2 and let's say that again we use h equals to 0.1 here x0 is equals to negative 0.2 as you can see this is very simple to use this will be 1 over 0.1 square times f of minus 0.3 which we computed already minus 2 f of minus 0.3 which we also computed already and then f of minus 0.1 and once you simplify all of this this is around negative 7.34 so you should stop the video and check that that's the case now in this case the exact solution is uh, remember f double prime was equals to minus a cosine to x and f double prime evaluated at minus 0.2 is actually equals to minus 7.36a4 which is not that far from the original you should be able to also compute the error bound pretty pretty easily like we did before and that's it for the section 4.1.